Rugby Championship 2023, folks. The second game is the Pumas taking on the All Blacks from Argentina. We are going to go through the squads, some recent results, predictions, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. The All Blacks have generally had the wood over Argentina for as long as they've been playing rugby. However, in recent years, the Argentinians have been picking up some wins. The last five, it is four to one in favor of the All Blacks. Remembering, of course, that of the last five games, none of them have been being played in Argentina. And if you were to look at the last six, then you would have two Argentinian wins there as well because they did win uh, that first ever game just prior to that kind of 2021 where the All Blacks, um, you know, won pretty comfortably in Newcastle. So, yeah, the Argentinians are certainly more of a threat to the All Blacks than they have been in the past. And um, they'll be looking to get their first ever win on Argentinian soil. I mean, 20, 20 points to 16 was the last time they played in Argentina back in 2019. So it was only a four-pointer. It was pretty close. Not the closest. The closest we've had in Argentina was a 21-all draw, but way back in 1985. So pretty much before any of the players involved were even born. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, for the Pumas, they have named a pretty experienced squad, I would say. There's certainly a few areas where the squad is looking a little bit younger. I've been still tuning into Michael Checker's press conferences, but his Spanish must be getting better and better because he used to do his press conferences a few words in Spanish and then uh, a little bit of, uh, or mostly English, and now it's kind of flipped on its head where he speaks mostly in Spanish. And um, I can't pick up on that much of it. I can pick up on some of it. The fact that he's, it's going to be difficult and, uh, you know, the squad's coming together and, um, you know, the, the, the kind of stuff which sounds familiar, but the generic stuff, but the specific stuff went largely over my head. But um, he did mention the fact that in an English question, how it's a difficult one for the Pumas at the moment, because unlike the All Blacks guys who've all been playing in New Zealand and the coming together is kind of a relatively smooth process, these guys are coming together from all different teams all over the Northern Hemisphere and a few in the Southern Hemisphere. And um, yeah, they have to do a lot more work kind of remotely to get the guys on the same page. But um, for the squad that has been named, it's Gajo, Montoja, and Sordoni as the front row. It's a couple of relatively young props. Like these guys are both like 24 years old. You'll know all about Gajo though, because he is Mr. Dynamic, ball carrying, tackle breaking, loves a carry, loose head prop. He is certainly one of the best guys to look out for. And then Montoya is captain. He is Mr. Consistent uh, at hooker. So I'm not too concerned about how the Argentinians go in the front row. I reckon uh, Sordoni and Gajo should stand up pretty well uh, at scrum time. I think it's an area of the Pumas that has been a big old weakness for them for, for many a year. But I think it's starting to kind of come right in recent times. But we'll see. Uh, Alemano and Lavanini, that's your lock and duo. That's very experienced. Obviously, there'll be all, always focus on whether Lavanini can kind of keep his discipline in check. And when he does, I've said it a thousand times, he's one of the best locks in the world, man. He has a huge physical presence. Just needs to kind of keep his head in the game. And then uh, Alamano is also very consistent alongside him. The back row of Matera, Martin Gonzalez, and Bruni is also pretty tasty, man. Like, Juan Martin Gonzalez last year was genuinely one of the most athletic dynamic loose forwards in the game like he just made some proper wonder plays he's got real genuine speed he's got a bit of power about him we all know about Matera and then Bruni uh, I still feel like needs to up his game to get back to the form he had a, a few years ago where kind of he was doing that block busting ball carrying from number eight but uh, we will see how they go Bertrano and Carreras that's Santiago that's your 9-10 combo so that's also I think relatively consistent from what we saw last year Santiago Carreras obviously being an outside back as well as a 10 offers something else you know in terms of his ability to run it uh, they could have gone with Sanchez as the more experienced guy but he is on the bench so it's kind of keeping with consistency Santiago Carreras has been the main guy at 10 for Argentina in recent times so that doesn't change Sinti and Moroni are 12 and 13 now Sinti for London Irish this season pretty much played exclusively on the wing but he is you know a midfielder as well so He's going to need to have a good game. Uh, I've been a little bit critical of him not really hitting his club form at international level, but I think his first ever international game was that win over the All Blacks. For Argentina's first ever win over the All Blacks. So he's been there and done it before. And then uh, Moroni's Mr. Consistent as well. 
uh, at 13. They've got a lot of experienced midfielders in that Argentinian squad, to be fair. Uh, Del Gui and Mateo Carreras are your wingers. Neither of these guys are that big. Like, uh, Del Gui's like 180-something in terms of his height. And he's 80-odd kilos. He's a footwork man. Like, he's genuinely, you know, able to turn on a dime and, and make guys look stupid. And he's up against Caleb Clark. Now, he may be able to make Caleb Clark look stupid if he runs around him, uh, but he's surrendering like 25 kilos in terms of weight. So defensively, he'll need to be on his game. Otherwise, Caleb's going to look to run straight over him. Uh, and then Mateo Carreras is equally, if not more so, dangerous with his footwork. Both those guys are genuinely pretty incredible. Like Mateo Carreras is, is pretty short in the scheme of things, like 170-something. But yeah, he's he's also got amazing footwork. And then Bofelli with the big boot of his, uh, very safe at the back. He is fullback. He will be doing the goal kicking. And um, yeah, it's, it's a pretty dangerous looking back three. Replacements, you've got a bit of experience with Krebi and then Vivas and Bejo are your prop replacements. Rubiolo is uh, only like 20 years old. He's not had many caps for Argentina, but he's named in the 19 jersey. Remember, there's no Marcos Crema because he's serving a ban. So uh, he's kind of missing in terms of that lock loose forward cover and then Santiago Grondona is there as well so there's no kind of like out and out lock replacement on the bench it's kind of two loose forwards but I think both Rubiolo and Grondona can fill in at lock in a pinch um, but yeah neither of them is what you'd call a specialist lock uh, then uh, Bastian Velez, Sanchez and Orlando are the back replacements so there's no sign of the sevens guys people have been telling me the sevens guys are proper electric uh, that were named in the initial squad, but none of them, uh, none of them are named in this side. Maybe the match against New Zealand is not the one to get it done, but it is the only home game for the Argentinians in the Rugby Championship. Probably remember they will have one game outside the Rugby Championship where they host the box at home. But uh, yeah, that is your Pumas lineup for New Zealand. Uh, I feel like Fozzie's going to get. I haven't looked on social media, but I can feel like Fozzie's going to get a bit of grief for some of his selections. Uh, the front row of, of De Groot, Coles, and Lomax, um, Coles will get grief for starting it too, because a lot of New Zealand fans are kind of of the opinion that he is the third best hooker in New Zealand right now, if that, and, uh, you know, is a little bit too injury prone, but he's your experienced guy, don't have a problem with him there, uh, Cody Taylor's your guy on the bench, so it's kind of pretty similar to what we're used to from, uh, from New Zealand in recent times in hooker, it's... It's Coles, Taylor, and Tokiaho. It just depends on who's in which position. Uh, De Groot and Lomax as your uh, your props. Uh, they need to... Like, I feel like those guys are both pretty good scrummages in recent times. I was never that sold on Lomax, but he's coming good. De Groot's uh, tracking really well. and uh, But yeah, I wouldn't say they're kind of like dominant scrummages just yet, but hopefully they can get on top from a New Zealand point of view. Uh, the locking duo is Scott Barrett and Josh Lord. Josh Lord hasn't played for the All Blacks for a, a long time. It's a little bit surprising to see him start instead of being on the bench when his teammate Tupovai is on the bench who had a lot more game time than him in the regular season. But Josh Lord is a bit taller, so maybe they're just looking for a bit of that genuine tall timber. I remember um, Sam Whitelock, he's got a bit of an Achilles issue, so he wasn't quite ready to go. So, yeah, it's a slightly inexperienced one with Josh Lord there. Uh, Shannon Frizzell, Sam Kane, and Artie Savia are the back row. I feel like that's the preferred back row for New Zealand at the moment, because you know Sam Kane is going to be seven, so that's a lock. You know Artie Savia is going to start at eight, despite what Jeff Wilson was saying about him having on the bench, but he's probably locked in at eight. So six is the only jersey that really is a question mark, and Frizzell, I do feel like, is the front runner, even if he's not kind of, uh, he's not Jerome Kaino. But um, yeah, in terms of that genuine six option, he still seems to be the leading candidate at the moment. Anyway, Aaron Smith and Damian McKenzie is an interesting call in 9 and 10. So it's a, a pretty bold one for, for Fozzie to put in DMAC. And certainly on form, DMAC was cracking all year. So I think a lot of fans will be pleased to see DMAC getting a go because the safe option would have just been to chuck in Richie Moonga again. But Moonga is on the bench. A bit of a hint that maybe they're saving Moonga for next week's game. Uh, but yeah, DMAC has earned a chance to play in the 10 juices. So I'm pleased for him. And then uh, Jordy Barrett and Rico Ioane is at 12-13. So it seems like they are sticking with Jordy as a midfielder. jordy has been talking about how he wanted to be in the midfield for years. When he got his chance, he did impress. So he's getting another chance at 12. And then uh, there is one debutant in the All Black side on the wing. And that's Imori Narawa. Uh, he's 
I think in that Super Rugby final, despite the fact that the Chiefs lost, I genuinely think he's earned he's earned that start. I mean, there's other guys who might have earned other positions as well, but it's pleasing to see at least one guy get that reward. Uh, he's up against Mateo Carrera, so I think for a power game, he'll have him, but he'll need to be careful on defense. Like, Imori Nao is a good defender. Uh, he'll just need to watch Mateo Carrera because, yeah, as I said, the footwork is, is pretty next level. That guy can make people look pretty stupid. Uh, Caleb Clark on the left wing, he's going to need to get his positioning right and um, and use that power game of his. And then Bowden Barrett at 15. Bowden Barrett, who's on the record of saying he doesn't want to play 15. There's other better fullbacks in the country than him. He's played exclusively, I think, at 10 for the Blues this season. He's at 15. But, I mean, he's he's been there and done it before. But, yeah, it's just... I don't know, man. Is it the right call? I would have loved to see Shooter Stevenson get a go, but that was probably always a bit of a long shot. Will Jordan didn't travel, so... I think it was always going to be Bodie, but yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll see how he goes. It's hard to get enthused about it when the man himself doesn't want to play there. But anyway, he's he's going to play wherever he's chosen, right? He's, uh, I think I said he's going to pass Dan Carter's record for a number of all blacks caps. So good on him. He's getting a crack at 15. Uh, Bench-wise, Cody Taylor, Ofatunga Fassi, and Nepo Lalala. Those are your Ford's replacements. The two Blues guys will need to step up when they come on because they haven't been at their kind of top level this season. Tupo Vai, like I mentioned. And uh, Dalton Papali, those are your four replacements. Finlay Christie, Richie Moonga, and Brayden Enor round out your three back replacements. Fozzie talked about wanting to build combinations. So that's part of what this selection is about. Um, speaking of things which haven't gone down that well from uh, from a New Zealand rugby's perspective, if you want to get that new New Zealand Rugby World Cup jersey, Level Rugby's got it in stock. Well, they've also got last year's jersey, which is cheaper and it looks nicer, but it's not a World Cup jersey. So have a wee look if you're interested in getting yourself some All Blacks gear. Um, I mentioned the recent results do go New Zealand's way, but as I said, the, uh, the there's no Argentinian games. They haven't played there since 2019, so it's been a long time between drinks. So some of these All Blacks players will have not traveled to Argentina before with the Hawaiians not being a Super Rugby anymore. So it's going to be a genuinely pretty new experience for some of these guys predictions wise the bookies have got the all blacks by 12 points so picking it to be pretty comfortable the rugby forecast algorithm goes one step further and says the all blacks by 16 at times it does feel like a bit of a coin flip like if the argentinians are gonna give a good go of it you could end up with a really good game like that 25 18 win they had but then amongst those other games you've got a couple of games where the argentinians got nilled You've got the 53-3 result, which followed up from the time when the Argentinians got that one win on the board. So sometimes it does end up being a hiding. But if the Argentinians can get their defense right, it could end up being a really close game. It is on uh, from Mendoza. It is on at 4.10 local kickoff, which is 7.10 in the morning for those of us here in NZ. Australian Angus Gardner is the ref. If you think you know your predictions, there's a Super Brew pool, which we've got going as well. That'll be down in the description. And then uh, me and Tony from Distracted Sports will undoubtedly be breaking down this and the other game between the Box and the Wallabies next week in the Two Cents Gets Distracted Rugby podcast. So you can check that out as well. There's some old episodes which might still be worthy of a listen if you're looking for some kind of end of Super Rugby uh, content which might be relevant for some of these guys who've been picked and um, all the squads that were initially chosen the Pumas and the All Blacks and the Wallabies and the Springboks etc so yeah you guys let us know your thoughts and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon see you later.